Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today for our session on what to know before you borrow money. I am excited to introduce you to three experienced FCS financial employees who are going to walk us through today the questions to ask, um, the documents you're going to need, and the things to think about before you borrow money. I'm going to be your host this afternoon. My name is Madison Farnan. I'm our Marketplace Engagement Manager headquartered in our Maryville office. Before I introduce our panelists to you this afternoon, I want to review a few different housekeeping um, details. This session is being recorded. This session, along with a brief survey, will be sent out to all attendees about 48 hours after we conclude today's session. Um, your feedback is important on that survey. It really allows us to bring relevant topics and education opportunities to our member owners and um, agriculturalists in Missouri. Um, lastly, if you are joining us live today, you will be able to download a free checklist, documents and information that you're lender will need. This is a great resource for you to have um, to review before you do consider borrowing money. Throughout today's session, I encourage you to ask any and all questions that you have, um, anything for clar additional clarification. Um, our panelists are going to be happy to answer those questions in real time. Um, please use the Q&A or the chat feature located um, within the browser. Um, so I am excited to go ahead and get started today. Let's start with ladies first. Debbie, can you please take a few minutes to tell us a little bit about yourself and your um, and your role within FCS Financial? Sure. Uh, my name is Debbie Ragsdale. I work in the Macon branch for FCS Financial as um, a loan officer in the Ag and Rural Lending Division. And um, I have a, I grew up on a cow-calf farm, have a background with a degree in ag from the university, and uh, my husband farms, and we have three kids. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Tyler, I'm going to kick it over to you next. Thanks, Madison, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tyler Keats, and I'm a loan officer with our ag and rural lending team uh, based out of Springfield. Uh, I cover a large part of the southern southwest Missouri down here. Um, I've been with the association for 10 years. Um, I live here in Republic and I've got three kids at home. Wonderful. And Brett, I will have you wrap us up for introductions today. Yeah, I'm uh, Brett Bryant. <clears throat> I'm a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a team leader in our credit department based out of Columbia. Um, I've been with the association for 12 years. Uh, my team looks at requests all across the, across the state, so we're not broken out necessarily by um, type of enterprise or location, and I am originally from a crop farm in the northeast part of the state. Wonderful. Thank you each for taking the time out of your schedule to to join me and join our attendees today. Um, it's wonderful to be able to have some great tenure and great background history from agriculture, currently still involved in agriculture, and then also that diversity from across the state of Missouri. So we are going to go ahead and begin our conversation today about what you should know before you borrow money. Um, let's start about with that initial step in obtaining a loan, um, which is when do you reach out to a loan officer? Because that's generally how you would get the ball rolling outside of just that initial conversation, you know, a, a producer may have at home. Um, so Debbie, as a loan officer, when would you recommend a borrow reach out to you about borrowing funds? Sure. So I would say the best policy is to reach out early and reach out often. Uh, we have quite a base of customers that we talk to ongoing all the time, and we're always looking at what kind of opportunities are out there, um, their ideas on expanding and growing. And if you're new to FCS, we would encourage the same policy to reach out to us, um, talk through different scenarios, cash flows, uh, projections on what you're wanting to do. Um, you know, you you typically can't grow without um, having the funds to do so, and that's what we're here for. Um, we do uh, a lot of refinances of farms, purchasing farms, rural properties, homes, um, as well as uh, cattle equipment operating. So uh, we see a lot of different scenarios every day, and I think um, we could definitely share that expertise and be a resource for you. Right. Uh, early and often. I love I love those two quick tips on when to do that. Um, Tyler, so 
When we prepared for this session, you advised that a borrow needs to be realistic with their request. Can you tell me a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, I think part of those early conversations um, is just is have a level of understanding of what you think, you know, that you can afford going in, whether that's down payment related, you know, how much down payment you might have available or what you can do, because that helps give us a start on on something to shoot for. Um, we're not great at just um, writing a blank check saying, hey, you're, you know, pre proof for X. We really like to kind of cater it to what you're really trying to accomplish uh, and what your down payment and stuff can go. And, and just to reiterate, Debbie, you know, the earlier the conversations that we can have, the better, especially in regards to a purchase. Um, when you're trying to purchase a farm, whether, you know, private sale, you know, something's listed or at auction, the more time that we have to spend with you, discuss options uh, and have that approval for you in hand before you go make an offer, um, sure makes it a lot easier. Right. I, I like that idea of being able to kind of talk through the options and the different um, different goals that a um, a borrower could have in mind. Um, those are that gr that great detail um, really would help with that loan officer conver conversation as well. Um, so, Brett, in organizing those details that will eventually end up within the credit team, um, do you have any tools or resources that you recommend a borrower would, would use when thinking about borrowing money? Yeah, um, to piggyback off Tyler a little, you know, it, it helps to come in with a plan. Um, and part of that plan is <clears throat> identifying, you know, what um, your cash flow can be, what you can afford. Um, a great tool FCS has on our website is a loan calculator. So you can go ahead and have already run the numbers to see what your payment's going to look like and see how that fits in with your budget. Awesome. Yeah, that that is a great tool. I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, FCS Financial's website houses multiple education resources. Um, we've got ebooks, different videos, and blog articles out there. So if you just have a general topic that you're interested in learning more, the website is a great way um, to do that. And Sarah dropped the link to that loan calculator in the chat. So if you want to take a few minutes to check that out, it, it's a great resource. So Shifting our comp back to our conversation, so we know now when to contact a loan officer. It, it it's going to be um, early and realistic whenever we're in that planning time frame. So Tyler, I'm going to ask you that we're, a producer is ready to reach out to a loan officer, but how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so there's multiple ways, uh, and whatever a borrower's preference is, we can typically cater to that. So um, email addresses are published on the website. Our office uh, numbers and hours and addresses are also posted on the website. Uh, and feel free to come by the office as well. So email, phone, walk in, all those are great. Um, you know, initial early conversations might be able to be had via email or phone. Uh, my preference as far as if we're really getting into details and wanting to discuss something, I, I really like just sitting down with a borrower face to face, whether in my office or out at their farm on their operation as well. That's great. I love that flexibility to have you even come out to the farm and um, really get, get to see the operation that way. Debbie, what about in your experience? Well, just to, um, you know, reiterate a little bit of what Tyler said, um, not to be repetitive, but if you do go to the website, um, I looked it up and you can Google FCS Financial and about the third spot down, you'll see contact your local office and you can actually put in your zip code of where you either live or where you're buying and uh, find out what office to contact. So that's another good way to do it. Um, typically with that first call, sometimes as Tyler said, it could be a telephone call, it could be an email, it could literally be a text, um, it could be a farm visit. Um, but typically the follow-up would be, we would um, answer all your questions, um, sort of go through all the process, and then we would send you an email, or if you don't have email, we would send out a uh, mailing. And uh, to give you everything that you need to know what you would need to gather to get a loan decision with us. So um, follow-up email, and then we're probably going to reach out and call you or text you or reach out again just to make sure that you got it and to see if you have any more questions. Right. So there's really no right or wrong way to reach out. And I love that it can be each person's personal preference. I know firsthand that reaching out to, you know, maybe somebody that you don't know very well um, can be intimidating. So We've, we're reaching out, we're, we're initial, having that initial conversation. Debbie, I'm going to kick it back to you. Can you tell me a little bit about how that first conversation goes? 
Sure. So I would say that we all have these conversations multiple times a week. And typically, um, we're going to focus on uh, the person that we're talking to, whether it's a phone call, um, whatever it might be. We're going to work to try to figure out, you know, what you're wanting to do specifically, what's your background, who are you, where are you headed? Um, we really want the full picture of, of what the scope of your operation is or what your plan is as far as um, potentially buying a property. And it really doesn't matter if you're full-time farmer, part-time farmer, uh, with wage income, uh, looking at rural property, farm, big, big, big farm, small farm. Um, we we do a lot of different business with a lot of different people. And although it is agricultural focused, um, we really do want to understand you and get to know you on a personal level so that we can help you to get the best uh, solution. Perfect. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I can tell that conversation really lays the foundation for building a relationship and actually getting to know each other um, for that longevity. That that sounds fantastic. Tyler, what are some other topics and information that are generally shared in that initial conversation? Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit different for everyone. Um, you know, some initial conversations can be pretty short and, and sweet and others you get right into the details and, and the meat of everything from the go. Um, and apart from really understanding, you know, your operation as the borrower, I think it's important for us to communicate what what FCS is and who we are and, and how we're a little bit different than maybe the local bank. You know, being a lending cooperative, uh, our structure is a little bit different. We have a lot of different things that we can offer. Uh, and that provides a lot of value, um, but a lot of times that's different to someone that's not done business with us before. And so uh, part of that first conversation for me is really explaining what uh, FCS as a cooperative means uh, and how that can benefit them. Wonderful. You're right, Tyler. As a farm credit cooperative, the products in our business structure uh, really allows us to best serve those in agriculture. So thank you for bringing that up. Brett, I'm going to kick it over to you um, to kind of provide a credit viewpoint of what is important to know in that initial conversation with a loan officer. Yeah, um, and and as Tyler said, <clears throat> each conversation is a little bit different. Um, it just depends on how far along you are in your planning and your process. Um, from my perspective at this point and throughout the process, what's really important is providing um, detailed, accurate information um, and as quickly as possible, because what that's going to allow us to do is to more quickly understand um, your financial situation and ultimately be able to get you a quicker and more accurate decision on what it is, whatever it is you're requesting. Thank you for that tip. Um, that really, I can see where that detailed information and in a timely fashion will really help create some efficiency around a request, especially um, since some requests are more time sensitive than others. So thank you for that tip, Brett. So we're going to shift over. We've now talked about what that initial conversation with a loan officer looks like, um, how to get a hold of them, and when they should reach out. Um, whenever you are meeting, you know, meeting with a borrower, um, are there specific questions that you look for a borrower to be asking you? Um, Tyler, I'll let you kick us off. Some of the, you know, the first big questions that come to mind are always, you know, down payment related, interest rate related terms, stuff like that. So those are things that are important to ask just to understand the differences on on if you're looking at multiple banks on the structure of interest rate, whether it's fixed or a shorter term type of fixed rate or something um, and the length of term. But ultimately, just, you know, we use when we're in conversation with a lot of times we we'll use a lot of financial jargon or things that we use in our day to day here that sometimes people don't always understand. And so I always encourage people to just ask for clarification for anything that they may not fully understand. Um, and then it's also important, you know, if, if we're talking about a certain deal, right, trying to buy a farm or something, um, if there's other future plans that you have in the near future, how making this decision now impacts that. Um, if it doesn't come up, you know, say, hey, if I do this, does it prohibit me from being able to do something down the road? And having those conversations again early can also repair on, on whether, you know, this is the right decision to make and how that affects future plans coming down the road. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you for that tip about that future planning, because that is sometimes it's really easy to get focused on what you're doing right now and not how that will impact one to two or even more years down the road. So thank you. Um, Debbie, do you have any final thoughts on or experiences um, that you would expect a borrower to be asking? 
I think a lot of uh, a lot of what Tyler said obviously um, would be the initial uh, questions. I think it would be important for a customer to um, really find out what the cooperative means. Um, what are the benefits of being a part of our uh, cooperative across Missouri? And as compared to another lender, um, that's a really key uh, point, as well as just time frames. I think it's really important um, to know what the time frame is going to look like on the loan process start to finish. And depending on what your request is, we can typically give you a really good idea of, of how long that's going to take. Um, you know, do we have state certified appraisers? How do we work with title companies? If it is a purchase, I would say those are questions that people um, may ask and may want to know the answer to. So that is um, that is great. Um, good feedback. So uh, making sure that you understand what that loan process is going to look like, what the timeline and just clear expectations about what is going on. And um, that is a great point. So Debbie, that kind of segues, segues us in a little bit to um, the loan process in general. Do you mind telling us a little bit of just about how that process works, please? Sure. So once we um, have that initial conversation and you receive the email and you know kind of what we're looking for on financials to get you that credit decision and move you down the road into um, growing your operation, we're going to ask for a balance sheet that shows your assets and liabilities. Um, you may already have one with another lender and that's OK. We can typically work with that if it's within six months time frame um, or you can also fill out ours. Um, also, we would need, if it was a farm purchase, we would need at least three years state and federal tax returns, complete copy, including depreciation schedules. Uh, what I find, and I'm sure um, Tyler's probably had the same experience, a lot of the CPAs in the area um, are more than happy to send those taxes over, over via email. So that's a great option to speed things up. It seems like we're always trying to help people to move along. Um, Sometimes we'll need cash flow projections, um, profit and loss, depending on the size of your request. So you can expect that if you're you know, asking for a, a larger amount of money that we would likely want more projections and that type of thing. Um, we can certainly help you with that as well. Uh, we all do this every day and, and we want to help you with those items. Um, sometimes you could go as far as um, bringing in a legal description of what you're looking at, talk about plats. Uh, plat the farm. And um, if you're working on cattle and equipment, we might like a receipt on that as well. And then um, oftentimes, if we're working with a row crop farmer, we'll want uh, proof of crop insurance, so APHs and uh, their levels of crop insurance. So those are just a few of the items that we would typically request. Um, and if you're a wage earner, a W-2, if you don't have recent taxes on that, that particular year. But those would typically be the items we would need along with the driver's license. So we're always going to need a copy that's updated on your driver's license. And really with that information, um, we can move right along to, um, to people like Brett who can go ahead and get the credit done. Perfect. Thank you for that information. Brett, so um, Debbie, you know, handed, hands it off to you. Um, after they've received that request, put that package together. So this can then be reviewed by you or someone else within your team. So tell me a little bit more about how that process works. Sure. And and the way Debbie outlined it was great. I mean, that that is a great you know amount of information we would usually ask for. What my team does is we then take that information, um, put it put it into our spreading software so we can start to evaluate the the credit factors that go into um, supporting loan decisions. Basically, we're looking at, you know, basically your equity position from your balance sheet, um, your your repayment position to ensure that the loan you're requesting has, a, you know, it shows that it can be repaid um, through that process. If we need specific pieces of information or have additional questions, we go back to the to the loan officer. They can either answer the question or sometimes have to get back with the borrower. Um, but ultimately, we're trying to have a good understanding of the operation of the financial position. And what that allows us to do is, you know, either approve the request as it was presented, or if if we identify something and say it just doesn't quite work, we're we're working to try to find maybe a counter offer or something that can work. Ultimately, that is our goal is to start with a package and at least get, you know, get back to the borrower with something um, that benefits their operation. 
Awesome. Thank you for that insight to kind of how the credit team works. Um, Tyler, so after it comes back from the credit department, um, the loan is really kind of headed down the fast track towards closing at this point. What are those final steps kind of look like as a, once a loan has been approved? Yeah, so now we're approved and, you know, we'll communicate those approval details. Um, we'll talk about any conditions that there are that we may have to verify some information with bank statements or, you know, whatever other factors might be in those conditions to meet that. Um, if it's assuming it's a real estate loan, we would uh, get the legal description, a contract if it's a purchase, get appraisal started, um, work with the local title company or a title company um, of your choosing to do the title work for that. Uh, they'll do their searches, we'll do the appraisal, um, and we'll kind of wait for that stuff to get done. And then once that's completed, uh, I usually just double check rates and terms and make sure that we're all on the same page with what rate we're using, how long that term's going to be and, and what that payment is and make sure that that's pretty much the same as what we talked about to start with. Um, and at that point, then we'll, we'll work on doc preparation and get it scheduled for closing for you to come in and sign either at our office or at a title company. Wonderful. I um, just lots of details to keep track of. So I love that as you know, as expert in our field, that it's really good to know that you're keeping tabs on everything throughout that entire loan process. So thank you um, for sharing those details. I am going to pause our discussion for a minute um, to open up the, the Q&A or the chat for any questions. It does look like we've got a couple out here. Um, so I will encourage all attendees, if you have questions or anything further you would like to know, um, feel free to drop those in um, at this time and we will kind of work through some of those. Um, the first question wants to know if we work with FSA on a first time farmer loan. Um, Debbie, do you mind answering this one? Sure, so um, we do work with the Farm Service Agency USDA on young beating farmer loans. Um, in fact, I've had a few just this spring, and it's really an exciting time for young farmers. You know, you have to be under 35 years of age to qualify. Um, it's basically the fact that FCS Financial is a PLP lender, so we are considered a preferred lender in the state of Missouri. Uh, we do lots of collaboration with the Farm Service Agency, and, and the benefit to the customer is that um, you know, we work very well together. We know each other uh, between USDA and, and FCS, and, and it seems like we can make things move along and um, help them to have a great outcome. Um, and as far as working with young farmers, it's just really exciting and so, so important to try to help farmers uh, get on their feet. Um, you know, we've all got to eat, and uh, we need to work hard to try to help the young people to, um, you know, make make plans and move forward in farming. So, um please reach out to FCS Financial. We are um, very well versed in these loans and can help you start to finish, so. Wonderful, I um, that that's great because it can be, not only is it intimidating to borrow money, but it's intimidating to have to bring together two different lenders on a deal, especially when you've never done that before. So I love, um, I love the reminder about the preferred lender status and just the experience and the relationships that our local office has with their local farm service agency offices. So thank you um, for sharing that information. Okay, so the next question, um, but this second one is gonna be for you. I'm looking to buy a farm in the next three to five years from my aunt. What can I do to make sure I'm in a strong financial position? Um, yeah, I would say the the first step is, you know, as Tyler's kind of alluded to, it's never too early to start planning. So I think that's where you start. How large is the farm? What are you expecting it to cost? Um, what are you what do you have now or will you have available for a down payment? which then leads to what your loan amount will be. Um, what's that payment going to look like? From there, you can start developing, you know, budgets and cash flows to see if it works. Um, in the meantime, then if you are working on saving up a down payment, do that. You know, you've set your goal in mind. Um, I would recommend managing new debt obligations, um, taking out new loans that don't help you achieve your goals if, if your cash flow is tight. That's going to set you back in being able to buy the farm you want to buy. Um, continue to stay current on all your loan payments to build your build your credit history, all of those sorts of things. But but really, it just it starts with it starts with making a plan and then starting to execute um, the steps you need to, to to get there. Great, thank you for that tip. Um, 
Debbie and Tyler, you both mentioned to start early in this in this planning um, conversation. Tyler, would you go ahead and tell this attendee that asked this question? You know, they're they're three to five years out of potentially um, buying this farm. Would you encourage them to go ahead now and start a relationship with their local office about this opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Brett just mentioned a lot of factors there, um, and a lot of people that are just starting out may not you know understand all those factors or have an idea. So. You know, we can sit down early and kind of go through some of those things and understand what we might be able to offer, but what it's going to take to get there um, and, and kind of give you an idea of what that plan should look like. Maybe give you some areas to focus on on reducing debt or how much you need to save for down payment and those sort of things. I'm totally fine at having those conversations really early. We're not going to necessarily issue an approval, you know, that far out in advance. Um, but giving you an idea of kind of what we would look for in that situation uh, allows you plenty of time to plan and, and maybe make some adjustments uh, on lifestyle or, or what you're doing to be able to meet that goal down the road. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that additional information. So I have got one more question here. And Tyler, I'm going to kick this back to you. Um, this attendee asked, does the information covered today apply to livestock and equipment loans as well? So largely, yes. Um, you know, a lot of times our livestock and equipment loans are, are smaller than a real estate loan. Um, a lot of times they'll take, you know, maybe a little bit less information overall. Uh, it can be a little bit quicker process, sometimes done in the same day or, or next day with some limited information. So a little bit different process to some of that. Um, but as far as, you know, all the tidbits that have been mentioned today about understanding those numbers and, and coming out early and often, uh, definitely would still apply to, to cattle and equipment loans for sure. Great. Thank you for touching on that. Um, thank you for our attendees for submitting those great questions. Um, if you have more, please go ahead and continue to submit them while we um, go back through our panel discussion. Um, those are great questions. Um, Tyler, I am going to kind of begin to wrap up our session. If you could tell any um, all new and or existing borrowers one thing, what would that be? I think it's just repeating what we've said multiple times today, right, is is don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, there's no dumb questions, you know, in these meetings. Uh, this is what we do every day. We we understand a lot of these terms and things that, that you may not. And we may throw some things at you in those conversations that you're just not sure about. Uh, and, and what we want to do as your lender and a cooperative is make sure that you're understanding of what we have to offer, that you're comfortable with it, um, and that you're making a, a good decision for you and your operation in the future. So I guess the biggest thing is just just ask questions. Um, if there's something you're not sure about, you know, speak up and uh, we'll try to clarify the best we can. Great advice. Um, Brett, what would you say? Yeah, um, it's it's hard to overstate how important it is to have detailed um, and accurate financials in a business plan when you're wanting to uh, when, when you're coming in with a request, um, the, the better job you do at presenting to us your current position and what you're trying to achieve, um, that that helps us support an approval. And it honestly, it helps us get it done quicker. Uh, so you're not waiting on us from a turnaround time perspective. Great. Debbie, I'll wrap it up with you. Any final thoughts? I really like what Brett said. And um, what I find is that the, the people that offer us good information, it's concise and organized, and they give us more than we ask for. Um, it really says a lot about who they are, what their plans are, and, and you know, it just looks good, and it helps us to understand who we're working with, um, and it just makes a really positive start and continuance down the road. I would say one tip that I've really worked with my customers on also is um, Try to do your financial statement annually and, and work to do it uh, 1231 of each year so that it matches your tax returns. And it can be a great working document, especially for farmers, so they know, um, you know what their growth trends are. You can compare year to year, year over year to see what their working capital is. And, and it, it also can be just a working document to, to know when payments are due and, and really just know your financial health. Um, so I would encourage people to work hard to try to get a good balance sheet put together and to do it at year end. Um, and yeah, so that that's probably the best feedback I could get. 
Perfect. Great points. Um, especially I know, you know, I know a lot of Missouri farmers that we were and ranchers that we work with are gold driven. And so being able to see those trends year after year with that balance sheet dated the same day is really beneficial to um, to watch their growth over time. So thank you for that tip um, to our attendees today. Thank you for joining us on today's session on what to know before you borrow money. Um, as I mentioned in our opening, live attendees are going to have um, access here in the chat to a free downloadable. This downloadable is documents and information your lender will need to process a new farm real estate loan. Um, you can click the link um, in that chat to receive access to this. This will go over a lot of the things that all three of our attendees had talked about in today's session. and and more, um, just providing that additional detail. So within the next 48 reg hours, all registered participants will also receive that brief survey I mentioned and then a copy of today's session to look back on. Um, again, your feedback on that brief survey um, will help us provide opportunities like this in the future. And I will check our Q&A one more time for no questions at this moment. So I wanna go ahead and thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.